everyone. Welcome to this week's Karma Cards. I hope you're having a great week. So last Sunday, we just had the full moon in Leo. And I love I personally love the full moon in Leo because it's always a great reminder of how to stop at taking everything so seriously that if you really want to tap into your creative power, it's about tapping into fun. And it gets me thinking about how things always seem to, difficult things, always seem to work better when you gamify it, when you can turn it into a game. You get a kind of endurance from doing that when you're working on anything that's challenging, including healing. And in terms of gamifying healing, I had a really interesting conversation this, this morning with my acupuncturist who was reminding me that energy expenditure without energy recovery is like spending more money than you make. And I don't know why, but hearing it like that really like dropped in. I was like, oh my gosh, you're so right. Um, you know, we've all been in a culture that really promotes pushing, right? Really promotes um, not stopping and consistency. And I, I am all for consistency because I know it bears fruit. But at the same time as we practice consistency and, um, you know, having the courage to go after our dreams and our destiny, we have to balance any energy we're putting out with energy back in. And a lot of the clients that I work with, they have a tendency to struggle with that. And one of the main reasons why is they're people pleasers or they're recovering from people pleasing. And this is something I also know very well. It's something I, I've struggled with and I continue to work through in my own life. But I want to look at this in a sort of gamified way through the lens of it's like spending money. So being a people pleaser or an over giver is like you're spending the currency that you have, the lunch money, if you will, that you brought to school for yourself and giving it to other people. Now, once in a while, this can work. You can get by with on doing that for some time, but there's a debt that starts accruing in your own life as you continue to give without replenishment. And so one of the periods of this uh, one of the points of the periods of this time is to learn how to look after yourself, how to be your own best friend. And even my guides, when I was like coming up with touching into the energy, they were like, let's continue to draw on this. So they brought up the dog messenger and dog as an animal spirit messenger reminds us to be our own best friend and to be loyal to ourselves so that we have plenty of energy of loyalty and friendship to share with others. Because just like spending money you don't have, you go into debt and spending the energy that you're not giving to yourself puts you in an energy deficit. And this can look like anything from being tired and perpetually exhausted to burn out to full on having physical breakdowns of some sort. So kind of like what I was talking about last week with pains or old injuries flaring up in the body, partly being due to the energy coming in and things clearing. And of course, one of the things that we're trying to clear is this sort of self abuse cycle of overgiving and people pleasing right? When you're so concerned with what you're putting out there and if people are happy with it versus making sure you're also taking care of your own needs, finding hard boundaries and time to unplug and allowing yourself to rest when your whole system is like, it's time to stop. Um, and I'm bringing all this up because it's very relevant to the time, but it's also very relevant to me personally. And I just want to continue to share this message. I actually have seen a lot of people sharing a similar message like this in the time period. And like I said, because it's very relevant for the energy that we are currently in. Um, but as I continue to work with my own healing, what you realize is that healing isn't gonna happen on your time schedule. It's going to happen in the time it takes. And a lot of times it's going to require from us surrender and even 
adjusting, changing, or letting go of old behaviors and habits. So if you also find yourself recovering from people pleasing, we need to start looking at our energy expenditure like money in the bank. And so how much time you give yourself to rest, alone time, recovery, setting boundaries, saying no to things, this is like money coming into your bank. So I want you to stop and think for a moment, how much money are you accruing energetically? How much of this income are you allowing yourself to take in? Do you set boundaries with your work time, especially if you're an entrepreneur? Oh man, do we have to practice that? We have to set hard boundaries with ourselves about how much time we're going to put into something every day. And I know it can be difficult because it's related to your livelihood. I mean, it is, you know, the work that you do is going to directly affect how much physical money you're making, but you still have to put boundaries on it and allow yourself time to reset and unplug and recover. We've got to look at our sleeping habits. That's something that I've struggled with for years and I'm still in recovery on sleeping habits, but doing things like removing um, all tech devices from your bedroom, setting a hard bedtime, giving yourself a ritual to go to sleep. All of these things act as currency coming into your own energy bank. Setting boundaries on how much time you spend on things like social media where that particular type of um, platform can increase your desire to people please or put out a lot of energy to try and get something back. Make sure you're also having boundaries around that. I find for me that scheduling my posts uh, a week ahead allows me to step away from really caring about what happens on the platform. I know that I'm doing my job showing up and posting, but it gives me that buffer of space between the post and it going live, me writing the post and it going live and it allows me to detach enough so that I don't have that feeling of like, do people like it? Do they do they want to see this content? It's more like, this is what I have to say. I put it out there and I let it go. So I hope those help you see ways that you can increase the energetic currency coming into your life. So you have that bigger bank account. Then when you want to give, then when you're ready to spend and use it in your life and use it to improve the lives of others, you know that you're good for it. You know that you're going to get a beautiful energy energy return through recuperation. It's For me, it's a really different way of looking at it. Let me know if you've looked at it in a similar way or if it's something that that's also new to you. I'd love to hear it. Pop it into the comments. And if you have more tips on how to bank energy and recover, right, to fill up our energetic bank account, share it with everyone so that we can learn from you as well. Now, let's see what this week's Karma Cards have to say and how it goes with this message. For those who are new to Karma Cards, let me quickly show you how these work. I have three decks here, planets, signs of the zodiac, and the houses of astrology. And I've already asked my team, what is the message you have for us this week? And I've got two sets of answers, a set in red, which are action related, and a set in blue, which are outcome related. And the way that you play is you tune in with your beautiful intuition and feel what kind of advice do you need this week? Are you looking for action related advice or you do you want to know how things resolve in this energy? And of course, you can always choose both. While you're choosing, let me quickly tell you the timing for this reading. This is for February 9th through February 15th. And the flavor of this reading, we have Mercury, which is really interesting because Mercury is kind of a big player for this week because it's about to change signs. It's been in Capricorn since before Mercury retrograde, which was before the beginning of 2023, and it's about to switch into Aquarius. So it's one to watch. In the sign of Sagittarius, so we're looking at um, ideals, um, the thinking of higher consciousness, we're moving in sort of an expanded view of life direction when we're in Sagittarius. 
And we have the 12th house. And the 12th house is the house of the subconscious mind. So it's things that are hidden, secret, or even larger than our own personal experiences are involved in the 12th house. The spiritual action at this time is to communicate your highest ideals, seeking oneness with all there is. So again, we keep getting asked to focus on the highest ideal, so the highest timeline, and seek that oneness with all there is, right? So we're being asked to focus on that unity consciousness that really is our actual reality. But many times in this experience, especially when we're in third density, even transitioning to fourth, we're still feeling that idea of individuality or separation. So it's asking us to drop it and tap into our highest ideals. What do you expect? What do you envision when you picture connecting with unity consciousness or all that is? Mental action at this time. Analyze the rules of philanthropy. Again, so this is how it connects, right, to the message of today, which is about looking at the current philanthropy or giving what you're putting out there as a type of currency and the rules of it. And, and that means that even if you're giving, you can't really give from an endless supply. You can't give from an empty cup. You have to fill the cup up first. So that's the rule that they're asking us to focus on is if you are trying to put a lot out, trying to create something, you're trying to connect with someone, you're trying to build something, um, you're just trying to please people, you're putting a lot of energy out there. You have to remember there has to be a return flow, right? Nothing's ever, nothing natural is ever linear or a line. It's always cyclical. So it always connects back, which means what goes out has to come back in. When whatever's flowing is going to ebb, right? The tide goes out and in, the day goes to night, all those things. We look at them and what we see is a cycle. So we're being asked to uh, tap in and analyze our own cycle. Am I being natural or unnatural? And if I'm only putting energy out and I'm not really focusing on what I'm getting in, then I'm going unnatural. And so it then asks us to rebalance that cycle, especially if you want to experience good health. Physical action at this time. Let your mind tell you how to get out into the world and keep your involvement hidden. And what I'm really getting from this one is about if the idea of pulling back energy into you is causing you to feel like I don't have time to do that or we're in a place where my energy is needed. You're, you're, the world's always going to need energy and remember that the way that it's been divinely orchestrated is that everything's in cycles. So when one person rests, another is giving energy. It's never expected that you carry the entire weight of changing the world on your shoulders, right? So um it it's reminding you that one as you recover other energy is being sent out and two many of the ways that we can help or send out energy doesn't require us to be face to face or one to one or putting energy out in a way that people can see, right? One of the most amazing things that you can do for another person is with the mind, right? You can send protection, you can envision light and love, and you can do this from a place of, I often do it as I'm falling asleep or as I'm waking up, but it's these thoughts where you're concentrating your energy for a moment and holding something for someone else without them ever needing to know that you're involved. And this can include people that you love and are close to. It can include large areas. It can include the entire earth, right? We can do this without exhausting ourselves or always um, trying to make a show of that use of energy. I, I wonder some if the message here is sort of for anyone who doesn't think it if it's a message for people who might think it only counts if it can be tracked or seen. And the message from the team is it all counts. 
And sometimes the best way to, to help or to create change is simply holding that intention while receiving the resting and recuperation that we need. All right, let's look at outcomes for Mercury and Sagittarius in the 12th house of the subconscious mind. Your spiritual outcome at this time is the awareness of insights to understand your faith. That sounds really interesting. It almost sounds like there's a kind of test happening, which I'm not surprised, but a testing of faith, meaning that uh, faith usually gets deployed, by the way, when we have to change behavior, when we're doing things one way for so long, and then we wake up and realize, crap, I have to, that's not working for me, or it's not getting the result I thought it wanted, and now I need to consciously adjust my behavior and go in a different direction. Well, we've got all this energy built up in one direction that we've been going, and even though we don't like the outcome, we actually trust what happens, which is why we keep repeating it, even if we don't like the outcome. When we're adjusting our behavior and creating change, we're going into the unknown again. And when we're going into the unknown, we don't have the data that we've collected about that behavior. We have no data collection on this behavior. And so there is usually a trust or a distrust or a doubt that comes in with employing new habits and new behavior. So this is a test of faith of sorts because that's what you're going to need to get you through that until you start seeing results, until you get to see what happens when you set stronger boundaries, when you rest more, when you break old habits, until you start seeing results, you're going to have to employ faith. And so what it's saying right now is the test is about awareness of how much do I believe this will work, right? Um, and at some point when it comes to being in the unknown and faith, you just simply have to make a choice to decide I'm going to believe this works because it's kind of the only option. And that decision to believe it works, that is the faith test right there. Mental outcome at this time, many thoughts about or from the wisdom of hidden tendencies. So also I'm getting that during this time while we are reconsidering how we're using our currency of energy, um, there's a lot of healing. And this actually came up in the full moon spirit circle when I was looking at the astrology of it. It's showing up that we have a lot of awareness now of what needs to be healed. Um, thanks to Chiron and Jupiter being having sort of a conjunction within Aries they're they're working together so Chiron's about healing and Jupiter is about expansion and Aries represents the self and so it's an expansion of healing in the self so we are going to be having um many thoughts and awarenesses about our hidden tendencies about the behaviors that have been and when I say hidden tendencies these are behaviors that have been going on for so long or thoughts that have been held for so long that they're on autopilot. You don't remember that that's what you think. That's how long they've been going on, right? It's just a, a repeated pattern that's on autopilot right now. So as you start to steer your ship into a happier, healthier, more expansive and healed direction, this awareness is going to come up and the thoughts can range from, oh my gosh, I'm so glad I can see it. I can finally see it now too. I can't believe I've done that and maybe I've done something wrong and, and all the thoughts and the feelings get to come up with our awareness of what's been going on behind the scenes. Um, and again, the, the key word here is the wisdom. So while we are hearing about how, hey, you've been spending more energy than you've been accumulating, we might want to have thoughts about feeling bad about that or how we treat ourselves and things like that. But rather, what's the wisdom behind seeing it? Why, why is this playing out? What can you learn from it? Right? What have, what have you learned from that experience? And what is it showing you? Um, about the true nature of energy. These are the things that you could start focusing your mind on rather about judging 
the experience as a good or bad experience, but rather what's the wisdom that your soul wants to gain through going through that path. The physical outcome at this time is many words resulting from the understanding of large institutions or overwhelming events. That always comes from the subconscious card. So remember, our subconscious is really interesting because it's not purely individualized. A portion of it is individualized, but it actually is connects into the collective and the super consciousness, right? So it's actually like, like I love to use the iceberg metaphor because you really can picture it that yes, it looks like it's standing alone, but it, the deeper you go into the water, the more you see it's connected um, and that all the icebergs might actually be connected to one giant ice shelf and even more than that. Um, so having said, said that, this placement when we're looking at things like Chiron and, and Jupiter, we're looking at larger placements. We're looking at something that's affecting the collective, which is why collectively we're getting similar messages about um, learning how to recuperate, learning how to slow down. It's also the year, the universal year, again, is a seven, right? Which is a meditative, contemplative type of year. So this kind of understanding is part of the energy of this year it's coming in strong already um so we're going to have a lot to say about that according to the cards we're gonna have a lot to say this week around what we're understanding about these bigger sweeping energies and we're going to be able to assess it not only from our personal life but then take that wisdom and sort of see the collective experience um, as well of hidden tendencies coming to light and the healing path and the the faith that we're going to need to deploy to turn the ship. Um, the ship is turning. It is in your life and in the collective as well. The ship has, has been turning and now we're again navigating in an, an uncharted water kind of situation where more faith is being deployed which is why I think the cards have been saying focus on your ideals focus on the the way that you want things to be the the way that you believe it's going to go really focus on that because that in connection with our faith helps create it and with that I hope that you get a lot of recovery I'm sending you a lot of wishes for your energetic bank account to start overflowing so that you have more than enough energy for yourself that when you go to share it you feel good and you feel balanced and not depleted sending you so much love Mwah.